Hi, in this lesson we're going to do sigma notation. Okay, so what on earth is sigma? Well, sigma is the capital S in Greek. This is the sigma sign and it's a capital letter for S. And the common sigma format that we're going to have is something like this. I is equal to blah blah, some number um, there and some number there and inside this sigma notation I'm going to call it inside I just mean it's something regarding the sigma notation there's going to be some function or some formula containing this letter here in other words um, we call that letter the index so this is called the index the index so here is going to be some formula in terms of the index and that's called the sum function that's the sum function now what is this number all about now that bottom number this one is the lower limit okay it's the lowest value that the index will take in other words I'll do an example now you'll get it Okay, and that's just the upper limit. So that's the highest value that the index will take. So let me do an example. Oh, why s? This is before I get to the example. Why s? Because we are going to sum. We're going to sum up all the answers that we get. So in an example, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's say I have the summation or sigma with i starting at 2 and going up to 7 of let's say 2i now what that means is I'm going to start with 2 with i equal to so my first answer is 2 times i but i is the value 2 now so 2 times 2 plus now I go to the next number okay now it's 2 times 3 plus now I go to 4 so plus 2 times 4 do you see how every time I take this and I just replace I with the next integer and then plus 2 times 5 plus 2 times 6 when am I gonna stop well I'm gonna stop when I get to my upper limit which is 7 2 times 7 and what answer do we get? We get, first of all, we get 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 14. What answer is this? Well, this is 10, 18, 28, 40, 54. The answer is 54. So this whole thing, if I evaluate so they'll ask something like evaluate that and that's how I do it. Let's just do a little bit more difficult example. Okay, let's take I going from negative 1 up to 3 and let our sum function be something like 2 minus i squared yeah there we go 2 minus i squared so what do we do we start with negative 1 because i starts at negative 1 and replace it so 2 minus negative 1 squared that's my first term now whatever the answer is so well why not do the answer that gives me an answer of negative 1 squared is just 1 2 minus 1 is 1 that's for the first for the first value the next number is plus 2 minus and now i goes to the next number which is 0 2 minus 0 squared so i'm always going up until i get to 3 2 minus 0 squared 0 squared is 0 2 minus 0 is just plus 2 so plus 2 and the next number is when i is equal to 1 so plus 2 plus 1 squared. I'm going to have to move up a bit. 
2 plus 1 squared, 1 squared is 1, 2 plus 1 gives me 3 plus 3. Okay, and the next number is when i is equal to 2. I'm not at 3 yet, so 2 plus 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, 2 plus 4 is plus 6. And then the last number is when i is equal to 3. That's when I'm going to stop. So plus 2 plus 3 squared. And that answer gives me 3 squared is equal to 9 plus 2 is 11. And with all that added together, we get an answer of 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 is 6, and 6 is 12, that's 23. That's my answer, 23. If I had to evaluate that, the answer would be 23. In the next video, we're going to look at some uh, special rules and things that we can conclude from the sum function. See you later.